The Hasper Hamburg Marathon is a race that I've seen over the past four years attract some pretty crazy standards from the likes of Kenyans, Ethiopians, Ugandans and Eritrean runners. But in this year's Hasper Hamburg Marathon, I saw a crazy surge and increase of pace. In most marathons, the winner is usually pretty obvious. They tend to go to the front and slowly win and most of the time it's quite a boring race. I think this is one of the reasons why the mainstream will never truly be interested in marathon running unlike football or rugby. However, at this year's Hamburg Marathon we saw something completely unusual. Yep. Stay tuned to find out exactly what that thing was and if you're new to my channel, hey, I'm the runner and if you want to stay up to date with all of my videos every day then click subscribe down below and join the channel. Also please leave a like to show your support for this video and perhaps feel free to comment down below in the comment section any of your thoughts and your opinions of today's race. Now this race started off and we had three pacers at the front. One of the pacers I recognized as being Kiptu. Kiptu is a pacer who is really, really good at his job. He's one of my favorite pacers in the entire world right now. Kiptu is a Kenya who originally was a professional runner, but has found a good career in pacing marathon majors. Now, depending on what pace he goes to and where he sets the pace, that will depend on how fast he needs to run and when he will drop out of the race. That's not known for certain, however I can tell you that Kiptu has paced London Marathon, Berlin Marathon and even some of the marathons in America. Now I have no idea what the pacer on the left is doing. He's running way too wide right now and he's not really helping them. In my opinion he should be closing that gap between himself and pace 2 and allowing him, there we go, that's better. If he filters back into that position, then he's doing his job just as we see now, that is perfect. Right now we are looking at the first, well, around 4K into the race. We're gonna get the first split now coming up 5K. As you guys know, my favorite split when it comes to marathons. The 5K split is going to tell us roughly how fast they're running, what they are predicted to finish in, and if they are going to end up keeping this pace or are they going to slow down. Now one thing I already noticed is we're only 10 minutes in and there is already a gap between the leaders and the chase pack. The gap is big enough that the driver in that car behind thinks it's okay to go in between so usually this means the gap is fairly big and there's no signs of anyone closing the gap. However to me it does look a bit too small to have a car go in between that gap. I don't know, that's just my criticisms and opinions though. So here we go. First 5k, what are we looking at? We've got some marshals here. Great event, the Hasper Hamburg Marathon. I'd highly recommend it. At the end of this video, we're going to talk about the details. We're going to talk about the event itself. And if I remember, I'll leave a link to all the entry and the website in the description. Uh, so you guys can enter if you feel like doing this race. Very scenic, lots of trees, very good course, very good air quality. Unfortunately, there on the left, some of the athletes missing their bottles as we hit the 5k mark in around 1430. Now, I brought this up in the past uh, regarding old races that I've covered. And a lot of these guys are still making the rookie error of bringing the most bland, you know, plain colored bottles. And the problem with this is everyone then has the same looking bottle and before you know it you've grabbed the wrong person's bottle, you've ruined their race aid station drink, you've then possibly made them dehydrated and affected their performance and also you've now taken someone else's drink and you don't know what's in it. It could be tea, sugary tea, Lucozaid, Gatorade, a fizzy drink, it could be a soda, it could be a water, an electrolyte water, a gel mixed in with mineral water. It could be anything. You could be allergic to it. They could have already drunk it and put their germs on it. So, you know, it's just worrying. Please, 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 if you're an elite runner, get your bottle as eye-catching as possible. Make it colorful, put some tinsel on it, put a big flower pattern on top. I don't care how stupid it looks, it needs to catch your attention from far, far away so you don't grab someone else's drink and ruin their race by knocking it off the table. 
because then what happens is if that happens they will grab someone else's drink and that person will then have no drink so it's a knock on effect where everyone grabs the wrong drink and it's a nightmare okay then so the coverage up past around 8k was a bit questionable in my opinion Lots of split screen work and I've mentioned how I don't like split screen coverage, it really annoys me. Uh, I understand that the people covering the race are trying to be equal and unbiased to the men and women race, they're giving equal amount of time, but it just annoys me. I believe it's better to give full screen time and then switch between the two more often. So like three minutes with the male race, three minutes with the female race and just keep it on the full screen because as you're about to see, we're going to see the split screen in a minute. It's really hard to keep an eye on what's going on. Now, from there, I had to skip from 22 minutes to 51 minutes. So basically half an hour because there was so much split screen action that that's how long it took for them to go back on a full screen of the male race. Really annoying. And unfortunately, that meant that we also missed the 10k split on the coverage for the men. Uh, I guess it was somewhere around 29 high. They had slowed down a bit. Initially, they were operating at around about 202 pace, but they've now slowed to around 203, which is still very fast. Uh, it's still good. Kip2 on the right here doing a great job. And a lot of these guys here are looking strong, really, really strong. We've got Koic of Kenya, Kip Chumba. We've got a lot of big names. You know, it's not a low standard race, this. They're definitely looking for a sub 205 or 204 at this point. Okay, so I tried to find the point in this footage where I thought that the men would be going through halfway. And I thought it would be around about here. So we just keep our eyes on this footage. Again, unfortunately, it's split screen. I really criticize this form of coverage as I think it kind of devalues each race rather than just taking turns full screen on both. I think having this split screen, it makes me feel like I'm some kind of a gamer watching some gaming stream with like multiple channels or something, you know, like Twitch streamer. I don't know. I, I see those people with those computers with like five screens. It just makes me think, what on earth are you doing? You can only focus on one thing at a time. We're not aliens. We haven't evolved into geniuses just yet, guys. So, you know, I guess uh, I did miss the halfway split because I, I just couldn't focus on where it was. Right now, we're one hour, two minutes in. One hour, two minutes and uh, 11 seconds to be exact. And um, the women doing a great job here. We got some Ethiopians uh, leading the way, which is good to see. Also a mixed race, meaning they're running with the men. And I've said that before, I really, really like mixed races because it allows the female runners to run faster than if they were to just run in a female only race. So here we go, guys. Kip2 has dropped out and he has moved to the side. Now we have the other pacers doing their job. I must admit, I don't see the need for four pacers. I think that's a bit too much. I think three is ideal. Four is a bit too much, really. So here is a 25k split, Kilimo in 1 hour 13, 49. Uh, we've got Koic up there, Yegon. We've got Alu. We have Mola, Kip Yego, Career, and uh, Kip Limo of Kenya. So uh, shares a name with the famous Ugandan. Very interesting. Right then, we're looking at a few guys dropped off, but one of those obviously is Kip to the pacer. So he's nothing to do with the race. We've also got Korea up there for Kenya. He's doing a great job. So, so far we're looking at uh, around about a balance of three Ethiopians. Or maybe that's two. I think that might be two. Two or three Ethiopians and uh, two or three Kenyans. And then obviously uh, two or three of them are Pacers as well. So minus the Pacers here. And another Pacer has already dropped out. It's looking to me like a lot of these Pacers are struggling with the pace originally we had a group of at least seven or eight and now we've got an aggressive move coming from Koech of Kenya now Koech is really putting his foot down here this is the surge that I was on about we're 90 minutes into this race and Koech has started running 440 miles again which initially they were running for the first 5k but they slowed to 450s 455s and he started putting a bit of a surge in here and it's really, really brutal. I mean, look at this. He's running away from these guys. And don't forget that the second place athletes are still running at under five minute mile pace. 
So for him to drop them like this and to keep running at this speed, that's unbelievable. I mean, he's already getting that gap to grow every single second. And right now, I think that he's running away with this race. <laughs> it's, it's genuinely unbelievable. So they have slowed quite a bit, I will be honest. They've slowed to around about two hours and four minutes predicted. So that's maybe why Coet has had the ability to increase his pace and perhaps he was looking to run a bit faster and I reckon he's got a bit frustrated with these guys because maybe he was looking to run a lot faster and obviously now the paces have dropped out he can't do anything because he either goes on his own or he's gonna have to just hang back with those guys and I feel like if he stays back with those guys he is gonna run slow he's gonna run 205 206 which is not what he wants to run and sure enough if we increase the time by around 15 more minutes we see that Koic has dropped everyone he's dropped everyone by a long long way even at the 35k split which was five minutes ago he had all he had basically half a minute on second place and i think now we're over 35k we're almost at 37 or 8k and he is looking like he really is running something crazy. He's looking to me like he's running almost a minute faster than second place. So right now, he just needs to hold this together and hope that maybe he can get a good time out of this. He has increased the pace quite a lot. Now the problem with this is Kovic might burn out because I noticed in the bottom left, it's now just said that he's running 203 pace. Now that means that he has increased his pace to some 430 miles. This is rapid, but the problem is, is possibly too fast. I reckon at this point in the race, he's overworking himself and he's trying to beat that course record. Is he going to do it? Well, let's wait and see. One hour and 49 minutes on the clock. I don't think that this is going to be a very comfortable race for Koic over these last few 5Ks. He's got just over 5K remaining in this race, and he is really just putting in something unbelievable right now. He went from running with the chase pack to now running something so fast that when the pacer moved away, he made the others at the back look slow. There's a whole minute gap between him and second place look at that one minute and 11 seconds at 40 kilometers if we look at coach right now he is in a whole bunch of pain he is grimacing his face he is squinting his eyes and his running form is showing serious signs of fatigue now let's not take that out of consideration right now that he has put a whole bunch of work in to break down a pack of very very good high-level Kenyan runners, most of which that he will know, recognize, and possibly even met and trained with in Kenya himself. Now we see two hours on the clock, the elusive barrier that Eli Kipchoge managed to break at the Ineos 159, however failed to break at the Breaking 2 project for Nike. 201.35, now we're looking at some very, very painful last kilometers because What's actually happening here is Koech is slowing. He's slowing quite a lot now. Originally, he was running 203 pace and he slowed badly. Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad race, guys. Don't go and twist my words. But he is definitely looking like he is in a lot of pain. And his last couple of kilometer splits are coming back as very, very slow compared to what they actually were. Don't forget that when he had the breakaway, at around 35 kilometers, he went from running a predicted 205 to running a predicted 203. Well, you can see just how much he slowed. He is really burnt out here, but it's still unbelievable. Some of the guys in second have closed that gap a little bit because Koic is in a lot of pain. His legs are tying up and that lactic acid is really starting to set in now. Some nice aerial shots of uh, Hamburg. Really, really beautiful place. I'd highly recommend this marathon to any of you watching this video whether you be elite runners planning to run a world record or even just someone running for charity trying to break five or six hours. So here we go, 204 has just come up on the clock. 
We're looking at something around 204.20, I believe. There we go. He's hit the red carpet. He's got a bit of a surge. The crowd are rearing him on. And there we go. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Fantastic celebration. Two hours, four minutes and 20 seconds unofficial. Congratulations to Koic. In my opinion, that was such a gutsy run. Really great surge and he deserved every second of that winning celebration. Beautiful, holding the Kenyan flag with pride. Some of the top three runners coming in with absolute pure exhaustion. And a lot of these guys having trained for months and months just for this race specifically with the knowledge that they are not fast enough to qualify for the Paris Olympics. A lot of these guys in this race unfortunately are not fast enough for the Olympics this June. Therefore they would have been training specifically for races like this or other lower level marathons around the world. Okay, so let's take a look at the results here. Bernard Kowicz in 2 hours, 4 minutes and 24. So a bit of a lag on the time there. I'm pretty sure he went for in 2.04.20. Very unusual. So he ended up still winning by a minute and a few seconds. We had Alou in second. We had Kiplimo in third. It's important to note that's not Jacob Kiplimo. It is Philemon Kiplimo of Kenya. He ran 2 hours, 5 minutes. We have Ronald Career in fourth with 205.41, sorry. And then we have Sezdat Ayana in fifth of Ethiopia in 206.40. So all in all, we had quite a nice handful of guys. We had seven or eight guys break 208. So that's not too bad for the Hasper Hamburg Marathon. Very good standard, very good achievements from these guys. And hopefully in the next few months, they're also going to be training for some more of the big marathons out there in and around Europe. And also perhaps attending some of the great run series here in the UK. Because don't forget, a lot of these guys, although marathon runners, can still run very fast half marathons. And it will allow them to win more prize money, get their name out there, and really just promote themselves. Athletes need to learn how to promote themselves better, as this is my personal opinion if they wish to really increase their popularity and also earn more money don't forget guys we're going to be honest on this channel i always keep it 100 percent raw and honest a lot of these athletes do not post to social media which is so bad because they are ruining their chances of becoming more popular i know a lot of guys on youtube who can't even break a 20 minute 5k but they are earning more than some of these guys by making vlogs of themselves training for marathons this is why I must educate these African runners in uploading to Instagram and I've coached many of them in social media marketing. It's very crucial because even if you are only running a say a 209 marathon that's not a world record time and it's not going to qualify you for any Olympic race unless you're in a country like Venezuela that has a very uh, much lower standard marathon team than Kenya then you are not going to be earning enough money to earn a living and this is an issue with a lot of these african runners because they're training so hard 100 miles a week but they're still having to balance work and life which is very difficult so as i've said if you are a semi-pro runner if you are an african runner looking to become pro and uh, you know do it as a career then please get yourself on instagram get posting link the event you ran at take videos start a youtube vlogging channel just do it honestly just do it and jump in the deep end honestly good luck to all of you for doing that thank you to everyone for watching my video today please leave a like and subscribe if you are new to the runner tomorrow we got a big race coming up thank you and i'll catch you tomorrow